darlings welcome back to another video we are in number three of the shopping series secrets of shopping series and today we're going to talk about well of course shopping but we're going to talk about what you should do or whether what you should wear when you go shopping because these are all things you should do so let's get to it so when you go shopping, you're going to go shopping with the tools that we've talked about from our last few videos. We're going to have your measuring tape so that you can measure. That was a very old video um, at this point and go back to watch that one if you haven't already. It's how to shop like a stylist. Then you're going to want to make sure that you know what it is that you're looking for and its actual name, i.e. we're not looking for a tank top with the skinny straps, we are looking for a camisole. And you're also gonna wanna know your body type slash shape and measurements. And now you're gonna wanna know these things because when you go, ultimately you're gonna wanna try things on because you can only get so far with your imagination and a hanger. And when you do that, you're gonna take the measuring tape and measure the garment. I talked about this in uh, the How to Shop Like a Stylist video, so refer back to that. And when you do this, it's going to give you an idea of uh, how well the garment should fit. So if your hips, for example, are uh, 36 and you measure you know, across the bottoms, and it's half of 36, what is that? So 30, 15, 16, 17-ish. Seven, um, so if the you know widest point on the bottoms uh, that you're measuring is 17-ish, which is your roughly your hip width, the width of your hips in half, um, then those should technically fit. Now, how they're going to fit isn't always an exact science when you're using a measuring tape, but the measuring tape gets you in the ballpark. And from this point, you would take it into the dressing room and try it on. And this is when you find <laughs> a most despicable sight that I have recently witnessed. Uh, I was out shopping with a client and this woman walked into the dressing room area, not into the dressing rooms, just close enough like where there were mirrors in the vestibule with a, literally an armload of clothes. And she's like holding things up to herself and you're like, oh, I think that one will look good. And she like, you know, shuffling through this pile on her arm and hold it up to herself and that'll look good. And she's like chit chatting with another nearby customer and they're talking about how like, oh, it's all gonna look great. And she's like, I think they're all winners. I'm gonna take all of it home. And there had to be at least 25 garments on her arm, which is fine. Like, you know, if you're gonna buy a lot, yeah, go for it. But when you're buying blind like that, you're setting yourself up for failure in your long-term closet because you take it home and you try it on, and if it doesn't fit, you mean to take it back, but I know from all my years of experience in retail how often people, how often people bring things back on time, and that is, you know, most of the time, I would say it's about 60% of the time. So six out of 10 people are bringing things back within the return window. And then the other four are coming back outside the return window and still wanting exceptions made because they didn't follow the policies. Slight retail rant there. But the point is, once you reach that zone of no return, literally, you're stuck with it. And unless you're vigilant in donating it or giving it to a friend or, you know, reselling, or reselling it on Poshmark or something like that, then it sits in your closet with the tags. You never wear it, but then you also feel like you can't get rid of it because you paid for it. So you monetarily invested in it and you feel like you have to keep it. Like there's some sort of guideline or, you know, rule that if you don't get like your money's worth out of it, your use out of it, then you can't get rid of it. And sometimes simply giving it away to somebody else who really appreciates it is getting your money's worth out of it. It's clearing space for you to be you. And it's also giving someone else a chance to express who they are by having something that they love when you didn't love it or want it. So really, not trying things on is a huge, huge disservice to yourself. So how do we fix this? Okay, 
we go in for their tape measure. We know our measurements. We check the size of the garment relative to our measurements to see, is this one going to fit? Then we take it to the fitting room. And this is where the important information comes in. Are you ready? You should wear neutral, comfortable clothing. I know, this is a controversial statement. Why is this controversial? Because so many people, women, I should say, so many women shop in groups or they shop with moms or sisters. Um, you know, they the shopping alone is a rarity. And that's absolutely what I recommend is shopping alone because your opinions, your judgment gets clouded by somebody else. Now, unless you're shopping with me uh, or you have a stylist and you're shopping with that stylist, you should be shopping alone and you should have a plan as to what you're looking for. Next video coming on that. But when you're shopping and you're trying things on, you need to have comfortable clothes. So this is why it's important to shop alone because you wanna make sure that you have plenty of time to try things on, to make sure you like how they fit, and make sure that you're making a decision that's best for you, best for your closet, and best for you know your overall sanity. Because like I said earlier, if you're taking things home that you don't ever wear, then what was the point of spending the money on it? You wanna make sure you're getting your money's worth, right? So you're gonna to wanna to try it on. Now to do this, you have to get undressed. And when people go shopping, like I said, with girlfriends, moms, sisters, um, not alone, they tend to dress up really cute. You know, you put on some cute shoes, you put on the complicated, you know, blouse and, uh, you know, maybe a tie skirt that has some kind of funky button zipper combo that you need, you know, help to get in and out of. So when you walk to the fitting room with these clothes, the thought of like getting undressed becomes really daunting and you don't want to go through all of that hassle just to try this stuff on when you could just go home, get naked and try it all on at once in the comfort of your own home. And if that's how you operate, perfect. I recommend taking things home to try them on if you want to, but you have to be incredibly vigilant about returning it. So if you know there is even the smallest chance you're not going to take it back on time, then the rest of this video is for you. So what you want to do is wear a neutral bottom and a neutral top and easy slip on, slip off shoes. Uh, now, if this is the winter time, that gets a little trickier, but I would say like a pair of Chelsea boots, something that you can, you know, get in and out of easily. Um, and you don't have to struggle with like buttons or hooks or ties, laces, um, anything like that. So now we're gonna have a little fun and I'm gonna go upstairs to my own closet and I'm gonna demonstrate in real time how easy it is to try something on if you're wearing neutral clothes. All right, so this is the outfit that I've been wearing. Um, not all day, I spilled on myself, oops. Uh, so I had to change, but it is just uh, an easy dress with a little belt, I, easy to get it off, like super quick. But Ideally, you would want to wear a plain top and a plain bottom. Um, I, I think, think skirts personally are best uh, just because they're easy to like pull on and pull off. So as long as it's like a super, you know, easy uh, fastener, nothing complicated or elastic waisted, even better. Like slip it on, slip it off and you're done. Okay, so here we go. So what you have here is just a plain t-shirt and a plain pull-on maxi skirt. There are no fasteners, it's all elastic, like jersey just on, off, done. So when you're going to try on bottoms, it's easy to pull the bottoms off and put on something else so that you can see what it looks like. And the plain top, the just basic tee, is best because it doesn't distract from whatever you're wearing on the bottom. So if so we can put something else on the bottom half here and not have to worry about um, this taking away from whatever it is we're attempting to try in. And because it's, you know, elasticated and easy to get on and off, we don't have to spend a whole lot of time in the fitting room. It makes everything a little bit faster. So 
to demonstrate. It was that easy off. I got this new skirt on. I can check it out, make sure I like how it fits, like everything about it, check the length, you know, front and back. Okay, we're looking good. Next thing. And now with the top, the same thing applies. It's really easy to get on and off. It's just a basic. There's no buttons, zippers, fancy ties, nothing special about it. You just yank it off, pop back on when you're done. The only problem is I still have on jewelry. So this is something that you don't want to do. You don't want to shop with all kinds of jewelry, again, because it takes away from what it is you're trying on and and your focus is pulled away from how it fits and how you feel about it. So you wanna make sure that you don't shop with any jewelry either, um, at least not a lot of jewelry. Keep it to a minimal one piece and don't put anything complicated in your hair because that makes things more difficult too. The easier it is to get clothes on and off, the easier your shopping experience will be to try things on and to assess how it is that you feel about the item. So you're making the right decision and not going home with anything you're going to regret later. So let's try on a top. So I can see I actually don't know why I have this in my closet anymore. I don't like it. Uh, yeah, but it was easy to get the other thing on and off and I don't have a whole lot of jewelry on anymore. I have just the one piece left and I don't have, you know, bracelets, anything slowing me down. So I can really look at this particular item and uh, decide that it's not for me. And we move on. So just remember when you're out shopping and you're using all these tips that you're shopping alone, knowing your measurements, knowing what it is that you're looking for by name, knowing your body shape and how things fit, and of course now wearing comfortable, simple clothes to get on and off. And it's best to wear a top and a bottom that are both neutral so you aren't uh, pulling away from other pieces that you're trying on and you're not forced to have another top that's in the store to try on if you're like wearing a dress or something. And you can come out um, and like check in, you know, three-way mirrors if they have something like that. So, until next time, make sure you follow all the tips, shop with your measuring tape, know what you're looking for by name, and most importantly, of course, while you're wearing these comfortable neutral pieces so you can try things on easily, mind your style.